In the gallant days when history hung on the flight of an arrow or the slash of a sword. When feudal barons ravaged the countryside to live in pomp and splendor. It is truly colorful, exciting, fascinating entertainment every minute of the way. Moon Sea Adventures. Hello and welcome to the Moon Sea Adventures. We are at a interesting beginning of this next chapter as the party has finally found the Anthony Manor, a strange old abandoned manor uh, that is uh, several days travel north of Flan in the Moon Sea region. And uh, you guys had entered the grounds and you started exploring um, and in fact even found some tracks. You were in the midst of finding some tracks. And for those who perhaps don't quite remember, um, two of your traveling companions were uh, Ernest, the wood elf wizard, and Tompkins, the half elf ranger. Um, and Tompkins was in the midst of trying to track the small footsteps. Um, and you guys were kind of approaching the manor house itself uh, after kind of looking at some of the outbuildings. And the manor house seemed to be all locked up windows were all intact and i believe that is when jaunt you noticed that uh, the second floor window looks like it had been smashed like something was maybe thrown through it um and and the the glass around it was broken so it looks like something or someone entered um, through that second floor window, but all the first floor windows and doors were all closed and locked. And there was no, uh, no glass on the outside. Looks like it was it. Yes. Locked. And that's, and that is thanks to your keen perception. Uh, there, there wasn't broken glass on the outside, which would indicate something was thrown or went out the window from inside. This is definitely more broken into. And, and in fact, as you're kind of looking up and you know, the sun's in your eyes, you could see like some of the leading from the, the leaded glass is is pushed or bent inward as if something went in and kind of pushed that in. And at just as you're about to share this information with Harley and Angler, you hear a cocoon clang and you look behind you and you see just over the wall is this huge halberd that's just hit the ground as if somebody tossed it over the wall. We're under attack, man. Run or attack. Um, at this point, then, is when you see two tough hands pull up from the top of the wall, and you see the face, actually, you see the, the horned headband, and then the hair, the brown, the long mane of wild brown hair, thick, pulled back up into a combat ponytail, kind of pulled up over the, the, the wall, and you see the face of someone that you recognize. Um, and for those watching, welcome Marie, uh, to the moon sea adventures, Marie, go ahead and tell us what do, what do the rest of the party see when they see your character? Well, they see, a, a pale green face and, uh, very human looking. It's, it's weird. And, uh, a headband with, uh, boar tusks on it. And, uh, this, uh, this person swings a leg up onto the top of the wall and then swings the other leg up and kind of sits there and uh, says I was sent and very you know rough clothes um, you see a great club and a staff strapped to the back um, obviously female large big girl very big girl. <laughs> and and um, John, you you recognize this as Ushun, uh, who you've traveled with before, and and um, you you it takes a minute, and then you you kind of calm yourself and you recognize. Uh, it. Whew. Uh, hold your weapons, men! It's it's a friend. This is uh, Ushun, uh, an old a traveling companion of mine from up around the mountains. Hey, uh, Ushun. Nice to meet you, Gaunt. And then um, she put her hands on the uh, wall and then um, kind of jumped down. 
So pick up when, her halberd. When she hits the ground, she she um some dust causes an earthquake. Of, yeah, some <laughs> dust kind of like comes up around her feet, and then she reaches her halberd. Um, as you now are in in the vicinity, Yushun, you see um, a collection of people that uh, so. Jaunt is the only person that you recognize and he's pretty recognizable. He kind of has like a, you know, a, a, a clerical kind of um, wandering sort of friendly pilgrim vibe going on. He's got a, you know, a mighty long beard. You see his hearty oaken bow staff in his hand. Um, you see his holy symbol that you've seen him before. Um, and, and, but there are two very interesting looking other people in the vicinity of him. And then further along in the yard are two other people. Um, the people closest to Jaunt have uh, some interesting appearances as well. Matt, go ahead and describe Angler for us. What you see is a roughly five foot eight humanoid in appearance. He's got a long black coat that uh, covers most of his body. He's got a like a, a mask of a crow on his face and a hood pulled over that. And he's got like two a rapier strapped to his hip. And that's about it. Hmm. And either and, a bard or a sneaky guy. Yeah, he's he's definitely uh, the the mask is not well, you know what? No, I was gonna say you would recognize the style of the mask, but you you wouldn't. No, because unfortunately, because unfortunately there weren't any plague doctors for your poor tribe. But um, the person on the opposite side of Jaunt um, has a tall uh, top hat. And that's the, the beginning of what you notice is that this top hat adds like another foot of height to this apparently human humanoid looking person. Um, Veet, go ahead and describe uh, what Harley looks like. Well, Harley is like the uh, uh, the the most usual person you'll meet in every town. Uh, he has a high top hat and walking stick, and he's just an ordinary guy. And he he doesn't. You, when you look at him, Ushun, you don't really get any sense of like his occupation. He, he literally just looks like a resident of a town. Um, he doesn't look like a hardened adventurer. Um, you don't, you know, I mean, he's got a blade, like a, a, a thin blade, but nothing really jumps out at you as being like, you know, any kind of particular vocation. Um, and then mm. beyond them coming around, mm, one nice of the um, coming around one of the buildings, you see a, uh, a kind of tan skinned um, wood elf who kind of, you know, comes around and, and you notice he, he is very clear, clearly wearing like traveling robes, like a hooded traveling cloak. Um, and he has in his left hand, he's holding this big book that's very solid and it looks like it has like um, copper edges and and copper corners and clasps um and he kind of like looks out at you and looks at the rest of the group and he doesn't say very much but he walks up and and he kind of stands next to jaunt and he he does a polite bow hmm, um, need to protect you and then when you say that he, <laughs> he does a little smile and he he said that would be most appreciated the other guy comes over. At first, he looks like a human, um, and then he kind of pulls his his cowl back, and you notice he has slightly pointed ears, but he's got like a rough stubble of facial hair, uh, and and he's carrying a long bow. And you see, he he comes back around and he sees you, and he stops and he he looks at Jaunt and he says, "I found no other signs of the tracks. They seemed to end right out of here, by this house." Yeah. He's inside, I'll wager. Yeah, I like this one. Should I oh, look Matt. after him? Uh, I'm Tompkins. I yeah, I like this Tompkins. So you you um you guys notice that there's 
a, a silence, just the sound of like basically the wind kind of blowing through the buildings and the walls um, in this kind of abandoned courtyard um, surrounding this house on the hill. So how we get in? How high is the uh, window? Uh, you figure it's about 18 feet up. Hmm. Is there a door? There's a front door. Show me door. <clears throat> John, go John. The door. All right, uh, guide her on over to the, the front door. Okay. There it is, Ushun. So I grab the doorknob. Yeah. Try to open it. Yeah, it's locked. Okay, I will vigorously shake it. Um, go ahead and make an athletics roll. <laughs> All righty then, athletics. Where are my skills? All right. Oh, that's a 23. You vigorously shake the doors until you hear a cracking sound of wood, and then the doors open. They open right in just... yeah. And you notice that there's like little sawdust coming from up top, and it looks like you maybe broke the frame of the door. But one way or the other, the doors are now open. That I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to just poke my halberd in there to make sure there isn't anything in the first five feet. Okay. Doorway. So this house is when you open the door, there's a huge entrance foyer um, and, and a hallway that proceeds down. And it's a two story entrance foyer with stairs that go up to a second floor balcony that overlooks this entrance foyer. There's no, torches or candles lit, but there is sufficient um, ambient light kind of coming through the windows from the rooms on either side of this entrance foyer. You could see that there's some other room down the hall as well, though you can't see into it, but you could tell that there's somewhere other room because there's light spilling out into the hallway. All of the furnishings, the decor, of this house uh, look very finely appointed. Uh, all of the wood furniture that's in the entrance hall, as well as the tapestries hanging from the walls are all in very good shape. The only thing is that they're, it's obviously dusty. There's a lot of spider webs as if like cobwebs, no, no one's come through here, but it is clear that at one point in time, this is a very well appointed home. Okay, I'll step in, look to the right, look, look to the left, look ahead. Okay. And if so there isn't anything point, there, I'll say it's all clear. At this point, why don't you guys tell me what your plan is for moving in? So I, I, as, a, as a marching order, roughly, where are you going to be? I suppose I'll be right behind Ushun if, uh, since I, you know, she and I both approach the door. Okay. Uh, Unless somebody anger. wants to. Take point behind uh, Jean, and I'll light my hooded lantern when it gets dark. Okay. Um, Harley? I'll try to uh, slip with the murmur into the hallway and be right behind the angler. Okay. Okay, so you guys are in the entrance hallway. Um, there's There are several, like, armoires and there's uh, like tapestries hanging from the walls. There looks like uh, to, to the right is a door to some kind of room and to the left is another door. Both of these doors are open. Uh, the room to the right seems to be some kind of parlor and the room to the left looks like some kind of office. And then, like I said, there are stairs that go up to a balcony and a second floor. So, um, Ushun, you had mentioned that you're going to go look to the right, and you, the door, like I said, is open. You could see that it looks like some kind of parlor. There's upholstered furniture, uh, like very nice looking, but again, just 
like the doorway, you literally have to like push your hand through the cobwebs. Um, all the furniture is kind of covered in a layer of dust. Do I see any knickknacks lying around? Sure, make a perception check. Um, if the rest of you guys are going into the parlor, you too could make uh, perception checks if you would like. Well, I would like to go in the opposite direction to the office. Okay. I will get to you in a second then. Okay. I will give uh, Ushun advantage if I can. Okay. With the help action. But right. on the on the perception? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Good. I uh, needed that. I got a 19 perception. Several successful rolls. Let's say that since Angler and Uchun, you were kind of collaborating in this, what was your best roll uh, with advantage there? Four. That was your best roll? Good God. Um, yeah, bad dice. You do, you do get to roll on the table of useless things. So please roll okay. percentile dice. That's awesome. Good. Because I have a flaw. Roll okay. for Okay, 26. You find a bag. So in one of the dressers, um, there's like a sideboard basically that looks like it's a serving thing and you're opening it up and it looks like there's linens and there's like, you know, storage of of uh, like some some ceramic teacups and small plates. Oh <laughs> but you find okay, a fine. bag. You find like a, a, a bag and when you pick it up, you shake it. But it sounds too light for coins. And when you open it up, you 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 open it up and you see there's a whole collection of teeth, like human teeth in this bag. Ah, oh, I hold one up. Yes. Huh. Um, John, huh. you you are searching and you kind of are searching through some of the other furnishings and some of the other decorations. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of little trinkety things along uh, the top of the mantle. And you actually find um, a couple decorative little statues that have gems in them. Um, two of them are citrines. One is onyx and one is quartz. So there's like little, little statues of what? They're like little statues of, you know, human kind of heroic figures, but they have like gems in them. Very fancy miniatures. That's what they are. They are made of fancy stone. Um, and then, and then uh, you also will roll on the table of fancy things. I mean, useless things. 13, lucky 13. Okay. This you find up on the mantle, you find a large, what looks like a tooth, but way too big to be from any kind of human. It's a really big, like, fang. And then make I a second it's... roll. 16. Uh, you find a small silver mirror. Silver mirror. Okay. Um, cool. There are dozens and dozens in this parlor of uh, of serving things that are made of just just mostly like ceramics. You know, like cups, small plates, medium plates, large plates. Um, there is some iron, um, like cutlery and forks and stuff. Um, but it looks like it's kind of all just storage. You do find a box of uh, very stale tobacco uh, that's completely dried out next to a pipe next to one of the chairs. All right, smash cut to Veet. Um, Harley is walking down the hall and do you, you said you send murmur forward to scout things out yeah, yeah, yeah. okay it looks like down the hall there's a um a, a door that opens up into a large dining room that's the the first kind of spill of light 
And this large dining room has like a huge table that looks like it could easily seat about 16 people. And it also, this room is covered in dust, you know, cobwebs hanging from this chandelier with, you know, stubs of candles. Nothing looks out of place. Um, I mean, like literally there are place settings and linens on the table, but it's all just covered in a layer of dust. Very fine quality wooden furniture throughout this large dining room. And there, again, are more serving um, pieces, you know, scattered throughout the room. Do you, did you want to search this area? Okay, I'll give it a quick glance. Okay, and go ahead. And then... Okay. Uh, <laughs> Fifteen. Okay. You you find a actual silverware set, a complete silverware set that is wrapped up in this cloth inside of one of the um, armoires, and it it looks like there are about twenty total sets in this. So I'll pick. A few, okay. like a handful. Okay. And then I'll head to the office I saw uh, from the entrance. Okay. Um, there, the hallway does continue to what looks like the servant side of the manor, uh, but that there is a closed door. So if if you wanted to continue down the hall or back up towards the study. Mm, towards the study. Okay. So um, the rest of you guys around this same time, you, you kind of finish your stuff. You come back out into the entrance foyer and you see uh, Harley kind of walking back up with you towards the study. Uh, when you go, yeah, go ahead. Um, I want to take a look at that tooth on the mantelpiece. Um, all right, John, do you show that to Ushun? Sure, yeah. You have an interest in teeth, Ushun. Behold. Not, yeah, not, not say, really. You can, you can make a either animal handling or survival check to identify what this is. How about nature? Yeah, or nature. I'll accept that. Okay. Those. Okay, these dice are getting locked up. I don't know. Dice <laughs> jail time. Um, you all right, it looks big, but you you've seen a lot of big creatures especially the further away from civilization you are and the further north you get it. This could be a, a bear. It could be something, but it's something big. It's like on that scale. All right. You guys go into the study. You see a large Oak desk, very well appointed. There are, there are even stacks of paper and like ledger books on this desk. There's like a, a, a well of ink that is long ago dried out and a quill. Everything's covered in dust, cobwebs hanging from all around. There are multiple candelabras and uh, single candle holders, you know, that, that looks like they were used here. And behind this desk is built-in bookshelves with ornate like scroll work on the shelves um, and just a ton of books. There's also some comfortable seating uh, and again, another end table with another fancily carved pipe, but the box of tobacco is clearly like dried out, very crumbly tobacco. Um, you guys want to search this room as well? I want to get thorough investigation. Okay. What, uh, what are you trying to investigate? Well, I'm looking all over the books and uh, if there is the book we are searching for or uh, some kind of uh, abnormality, like, uh, you know, the hidden switch okay. or sure. something. Okay. Go ahead and make your investigation check. Um, uh 12. 12. All right. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what you do find amongst the books and then everybody else can make, if you guys want to search, you can make perception checks. Um, but you, during your investigation, you don't find any special 
magical levers that open up secret doors. You do find a variety of books about the different nature, uh, like natural sciences. Um, there, there are books and, and studies, and some of these look like they have been penned by um, different members of the Anthony family as well. But there, there's a lot of books about agriculture, about like, you know, soil and, and fertilizing. Um, there, there are studies of different kinds of um, plants and, and produce kind of like vegetables and, and grains. And the, the majority of the library seems to be focused on, you know, those kind of studies, but even like specific like almanacs about like rainfall and a lot of ledgers that keep track of like um, the crop yields from year to year and rotations of the of the land of the of the crop so there there's um, it just seems like this you know is is kind of the wealth of the decades that the anthony family had successfully kind of you know expanded their estate and and their holdings um you do okay. find also records of uh like landlord records where basically it shows like that they had rented these uh, cottages to, you know, farmers who then in turn farmed their land and were paid like a stipend based on their, the amount of crops that they were able to, to bring in. But it's, it's, it seems to be very meticulous, very well organized. And the current papers and ledger that are on the desk seem to have been from the last season that they were in prior to them leaving. Okay. What, you and what you don't find is any record of like why they left. Okay, any uh, any papers specifying ownership of land or yes, anything? all of I mean, if I'm going to say that it takes you like a half an hour to do this, but collectively okay. you guys are able to figure out that like the Anthony family, they initially purchased you know a hundred acres of land and then they kept expanding and kind of buying more land and you could see through their books like their ledgers. Their bookkeeping was very organized, um, and that they they had a you know very diverse kind of portfolio of of crops, as well as you know other kind of holdings for land. Um, they were even doing you know a rotation where like every three years they would like just completely let you know the the land kind of settle and and not you know rotate anything through it. Um, they had an extensive livestock inventory um you know they they had like a hundred head of cattle they had you know chickens they had hogs they had um sheep all this stuff so they they kind of had like a whole mega farm going um and and there's even records of them bringing down textiles like you know the the they would bring down yarn for trade uh in in you know in flan like every season as well as crops that kind of stuff why the hell would they leave? Indeed. Yes, question. Ushun's not hanging around for this. Yes. So anybody She's else gonna... who just wants to loot and, uh, and examine what's in the office, just make a perception roll. No, what I want to do is I want to check all the rooms and basically clear them, you okay. know, like a cop does. Yes. And then, uh, and then go upstairs and see what's in all the rooms there. Okay. Just looking, not handling anything 10 four john yeah. six perception okay you you basically find a lot of books there's <laughs> there's a lot of paper um much of it used much of, there there's some unused paper um if you wanted to like take any of those kind of like clerical you know administrative things for your own uses you could um otherwise it's just a very well appointed office I'll take uh, the pipe if I'm imagining it's a better pipe yes. than the one I have. So, I'll, so I'll this take that. is a it's a nicely carved pipe, um, and it it looks like it's it's made of some kind of scrimshaw like carving, um, and it's it's probably worth a fair amount. Nice, um, but the scrimshaw. But Car carving it's not native to this area uh you make a history check uh 
12. You're, you're not like an appraiser, so you're not quite sure how much this is worth, but you know it's not native to the Moonsea region. You have in your travels heard of uh, like very fancy scrimshaw work coming out of the northwest of here. Um, there's, there's an icy region um, that you know, it's kind of to the Northwest as, as you get into the cold lands where, um, they do a lot of this kind of bone crafting. So, um, but you figure it's worth a decent buck and it seems to, you know, you kind of take a pull off of it and it, it's, it's built right. The airflow is appropriate. So is it uh, ivory or bone or it is, it is some kind of bone. Um, you're not sure what kind of bone it is. Um, well, I, I sort of remark aloud about how, I mean, we're finding a bag of teeth, a big old sharp tooth on the mantle, this bone. And I don't know. There seems to be some interesting uh, pattern there. I also want to say aloud that uh, if we should ever pass by um, uh, the farmstead of uh, Karoff and Sam and the good lady wife of the farm, I want to tell them about all these books on agriculture and all that stuff. This could really benefit them. Mm -hmm. if, indeed if they know um, how to read it's no problem you're not sure if they know how to read um <laughs> angler what did you get on your roll um instead of rolling i'd like to ask ergos the wizard yeah if he's got what i know about like the spell detect magic yes i would like to ask him on my little board if he has that spell could he use it all right you get out your slate and your chalk and you write it and he looks at it and he's like why have you found something that is perhaps magical i would be happy to to investigate it or are you just generally suggesting that i walk through this large manner concentrating on my magical ability and hoping that i come across something that is intrinsically magical or no, just put a two second option <clears throat> Yes, let's have a closer look. My my instinct is that uh, we will get lucky at some point, but I also want to make sure that this home is safe. And I, I agree with the large uh, half-orc woman, uh, Ushun, that perhaps we should fan out and investigate this manner further, further to ensure that we are truly uh, alone here. Uh, Ushun, you, you walked out on your own um, you walk down the hall, you see a dining room, and then there's another door past that. Open it. It, it is open. It's not locked. You mm -hmm. open it, you find yourself in a short hallway that opens up to a large kitchen and then a, what looks like a big walk-in cupboard slash storage area. Uh, this... This is, um, looks like a big kitchen. Nah, no creatures and around, huh? No, you, you mm -hmm. don't see any rats. You don't see any mice. Um, you do see layers of dust. The, oh, the, yeah, storage, the storage in the pantry looks like it was cleared out. Mm. Like move you on. don't. What's odd is that it's the only area that looks completely cleared out, like like people took things. There's mm. no food on the shelves. Yep, moving on. Okay. Um, mm, let me see. Is there a back door to a to a garden? There, there, there is. There's a there's a back door out of the kitchen, and you see when you look out in the back, you see a small uh, house that looks like. Well, you see a small house. Yeah, go that way. Okay. Um, it's unlocked, but there's a, a smell of rot from inside of it. Okay. Open the door. It's not fresh rot. You open it and you see desiccated animal corpses. It, it looks like maybe a smokehouse. Mm. You see what's left of these things that were hung and, and left to smoke in here and looks like the, the meat was just left. Yeah, leave the door open, come back. Um, you also see a, a tower 
that looks like a maybe some kind of grain tower. You've seen these before when you've walked past farms that sometimes they have these big stone towers where they store their grain, their extra grain. I won't go there yet. There's also a well with a rope hmm. and a pulley and a bucket. Well, well, well. Oh, let's see what the what the water's like. Okay. Drop the bucket, splash. Sounds like there's water. You reel it up, comes up looking like well water. Take a long drink. Tastes okay. Yep. And I'll I'll leave Take the backyard. Take a constitution save. No, oh, I'm, just, no. I'm, just, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> it, it tastes fine. It's not, it is not the pure mountain water that you got so accustomed to when you were in the valley with the dwarves. It's it's well water, you know, tastes kind of earthy, but it's it seems to be okay. Yeah, go back in. Unless there's another entrance uh, in the back here somewhere. Nope. Okay, go back in through the kitchen and I guess up the stairs. Okay. Unless there are other rooms on this first floor. Uh, no, you have okay. explored them all. I know, uh, start going so upstairs. You're going, coming back, um, Angler and Jaunt, you guys come out um, with Ushun, you guys basically, the, the group of you, um, We'll, we'll go upstairs. So Ushun, Jaunt, um, Angler, Ernest, and Tompkins. I tell uh, them what's what's out back, and I said oh, yeah. I didn't go to I didn't go to the tower because towers, you know, there it's either grain or weird wizards. So I, you know, um, a shack of rotting meat. Uh, none of the food is in the in the cupboard of the kitchen. The only place that's cleared out. I'm ready to go upstairs. Okay. Go there. You guys go uh, your lead. I say to uh, Mr. Tompkins, I say, I'll wager my best socks that this halfling or some other ne'er do well is here. We saw, you know, evidence of someone entering, but haven't seen any evidence of anyone exiting. So we must be careful. Keep your eyes open for tracks, Mr. Tompkins, because uh, I doubt anybody, even a halfling, could avoid leaving tracks in dust this thick and ancient. As you guys get oh. to the top of the stairs, there's a long, ornate carpet like a runner. And then there's a um, arched doorway that goes down a straight hall. And you could see doorways leading to four different yeah. rooms. All four of those doorways are closed. Uh, hmm. I think Tom can should, should go passive. first. I need to know what everybody's passive perceptions are because <laughs> I don't have my cheat sheet next to me. <laughs> 13. Nine. 10. Passive perception, nine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You walk into the mouth of a fire giant. No, just kidding. Uh -oh. <laughs> Good thing I, I got a halberd. <laughs> Good, <wouldn't> thing. <laughs> Good thing that's the trigger for your rage. Mm. <laughs> okay, so um, you guys, you as I said, you're 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 up at the top. You're kind of like you know behind you is the the foyer. You're looking down. In front of you is this hallway. One, two, three, four. Four doors going down, and then it dead ends. There's no window at the end of the hallway. So it's dark. This hallway is dark. Same procedure as in the crypt. Okay. And I'm heading, I know I'm heading forward to the um, last door on the left. I'll go to the last door on the right. Okay. I don't know what the procedure is, but. So just as an FYI, you, John, you figure that where you saw the broken window was the first door on the right. I should say that before everybody bumbles down the hall. That's oh. what, you, well, because when you were outside, you saw the upper level windows and that first one on the, is, you know, you're kind of like, oh, I think it's this room. And, you know, as you're mentioning that whole thing with the Halfling and Tompkins. Mm. So you, you, um, 
you feel like that first door on the right is where the broken window room was. Uh, I don't suppose there's a keyhole in it. Um, there is. Oh, go down there and take a little peek. See if I can see anything illuminated in there. If it's to oh, it's got to be the it's got a window. So okay. So, do I see um, anything in there? You see light coming through there. Through the keyhole, you see what looks like maybe a bedroom, like the end of a bed. You see, you actually see the broken window. You don't see anyone in there. Do I feel air coming through the bottom of the doorway? Yeah, a uh, little bit. Should I open this? Might yes. as well. Okay. Try the doorknob. Do I? It's locked. All right. Shaking it vigorously. Unless. Go ahead and make, ahead and make unless, your athletic. Well, I don't know. This is kind of. This is kind of not so cool, you know. I I only really want to break one door everywhere I go. So, uh, is anyone uh, really handy? I look at the guy with the mask on. I will walk over and pull out my thieves' tools. Thought so. <laughs> Try we, have no, we have no time lock. for this, and I blast the door. Uh, that works. Hey. Too. Okay. Well, that's the, is that the procedure you were referring to? <laughs> that would make um, sense. You know, that's fair. <laughs> you blast the door. It's uh, It doesn't blow the whole door open, but it, it breaks yeah, like the, the, the lock. Like the lock. And, yeah. So it, it, you know, the door is unlocked and, and it's kind of like you can just push the door open. Just have my thieves tools in my hand and I just turn and look at him. Um, <laughs> when you open the door, you see the light and you see a bedroom, a nicely appointed bedroom. Uh, again, it, it looks as decorated uh, for nobility as you would figure. There's like a, a painting on the wall that looks like a family portrait of like a dark haired uh, patriarch with, you know, some, some salt and pepper beard, um, an older woman next to him. And then like flanking them on either side are like three uh, tall, like boys standing. And then like two daughters that are seated next to the parents. And it's like, looks like this family portrait. Um, you notice that this room appears to be like the, you know, very, like I said, very well appointed four poster bed, huge bed, uh, nightstands, you know, armoires, dressers, that kind of stuff. I'll go over the, the do to the broken window and look down. Uh, sure. Make a investigation or perception check. Anybody who wants <laughs> to. Ah, better. Nat 20. Nice. 14. Okay. 14. So you could see glass underneath the window on the inside. You could see that the letting that held the glass in place has been, you know, was bent in and, and there are larger and smaller pieces of glass. So it looks like whatever broke through the glass, some, someone or something else must have pushed in more. Uh, you, what you see with your Nat 20 though, that's very interesting is you see that the wall underneath the ledge of the window looks like it was raked by something sharp. Like there's like three distinct, sorry, two distinct lines that looked like it, it like clawed its way up. And then like, there's like almost like notches underneath the wooden window sill. Hmm. Now, do we see that as well, or is that yeah, sure. she's the only yeah. one? Okay. No, you walk over, what? and you know she's. I pointed out, hey Tompkins, this kind of an animal. He, a he weapon? looked at John. I'm gonna get out my grappling hook and like kind of compare, yeah. put it up against there, and be like, yep. hmm. I mean, it's mm. not exactly the same, but you you look at it, and you, it looks basically like somebody really hard and forcefully and with precision threw a grappling hook through the window and anchored it. Um, 
what's funny is that, you know, as you called over Tompkins, he's looking on the floor and he's like, he's like, uh, here's something interesting. He goes, you notice how like the dust has kind of been dragged here. Like, and he looks around the room and he points to a chair. You see this chair, like upholstered chair, like a sitting chair with an end table. There's another snuff box with dried out tobacco and another pipe. And, but you could see, you know, when you take something off that like was preventing dirt and dust, how there's like a clean spot, you see a clean spot draped over the back of the chair as if maybe there was a blanket there, but you don't see the blanket. It's not on the floor. However, what you do see is a very clear um, dragging effect from the window to the door as if someone dragged something along from that window to the door. I'll or run on the, I'll run on the, the blanket. I'll run on the, in the hall and uh, search for yeah. anything similar. Good. Go ahead. Make your, make your investigation roll. Fuck. Got this Harley. Eight. Yeah. You're like, wow, the whole hallway has this weird <laughs> lack of distinct dust anymore. It's like somebody swept the what about, entire area. What about my pet? <laughs> um, so you're, you guys are, are kind of seeing this, um, this, what looks like some sort of master bedroom. The funny thing is, is that um, nothing else really looks disturbed. Is like there an arm? There, there, there are an armoires arm? and dressers and nightstands, and there's no tracks in the dust for, for in any of these areas. Well, I'll open all those up. Okay. Anybody who wants to search, go ahead, make your perception roll. I want to ask Mr. Tompkins, if this looks like someone trying to hide their tracks or someone just he, he's dragging said, something. He, he says, I think so. I think whoever came in, Perception moved, moved is only here 12 and and drag something behind them to to wash the tracks i've seen this done in in the wilderness with with branches to to confuse the numbers of people traveling through an area sometimes branches mm -hmm. are dragged in a in an odd way to kind of sweep the tracks okay, so it's possible our, 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 halfling, our halfling might not be alone it's possible to be cautious possible all right, did anybody roll less than a 10? Me. All right, you both are fired. Um, John, did you roll your perception? Uh, nine, so fired as well. Okay, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to... I got 12. You got 12? Okay. Yeah. That's good. You don't get anything. Um, <laughs> That's rude. You do find... In, in all of the dressers, um, you find, like, and even in the, the, the wardrobe, like the, the armoires and stuff, you find clothing. You find plenty of, like, noble, high-quality clothing. Now, some of it is, like, eaten up by moths, but you could tell that this was, like, high-quality clothing, right? But when you go to look in the closet, there's there's no um, there's clothing, but there's no boots. Like you notice some like dainty kind of footwear, like very fancy like velvet shoes, a variety of slippers, but no boots. They were uh, aimed to the agriculture. There is no chance they have no boots in their wardrobe. No chance. Yeah, I, took, I took them with them. I don't think so. I think they so. left everything here. Everything. They didn't leave Think. the food. They took the food. Okay, you need the food on the road, but... You need sturdy boots. I know this. Okay, you get the point. 
But don't you think it's interesting that nobody has ransacked this manor in in at least ten years? That there's jeweled know. statues just laying about and fine clothing and uh, there's a there is a mahogany pipe sitting next to the uh, the relaxing chair. I'm taking that. Okay. Um, unless you want to take a bunch of noblemen clothes and noble women clothing, by the way, this looks like perhaps based on the, the armoires, dressers, and the, the closet that this was the, the master suite. Uh, because I'll show them something. You see I'll, quite I'll... a few gowns as well yeah. as, you know, a uh, variety of different clothing items. The reason you don't want these, and I'll pick up some chemise or something, I say is this. I mean, look at these pants. My pants. No one can rip those. Um, well, you guys, no one should try. <laughs> you, um, after searching, that's kind of, that's all you find. So um, let's go to the other rooms. Does it look like the kind of thing where it's, it's it's mostly women's clothes left behind and or is it men's clothes just no boots? No, it's men's and women's clothes left behind, but it seems like all the fancy clothes and fancy shoes are what was left behind. Oh, okay. Like you I don't see. see any any leather boots, like anything that you know, people if they were gonna take a stroll and survey their farmlands, for example. They might want to have boots. You don't see any such things. All right. Yeah. Yeah. They don't yeah I'm, take I'm, he I'm heading to the last door on the left, as I okay. said. Uh, to get away the murmur. All, all of these doors are locked. So, lock is no problem for me. Okay. You, you know what I'm it. doing. All right. You open the door. It's another bedroom. Um, this bedroom looks like it has it has two beds. Um, Two like, not little kid beds, but you know, two adult sized beds, um, with you know dressers and armoires and a and a, a closet with hanging clothes. And this is all men's clothes. Okay, no boots. No boots. Only, only fancy clothes. Correct. Okay, another room on the right. Uh, this looks like a girl's room based on the colors and the girls' clothing and the two beds. Also, you know, lots of fancy clothes left there, knickknacks, decorative things, uh, perfumes that are long ago dried out, uh, but nothing. Oh, I want to I wanna pick one of those up. Okay. And I'm going to fiddle with it a little bit. I haven't seen any books at all. Okay. No, the, last um, room, the last room looks I, like it I, I was tend for, to break things, so did I break this? <laughs> um, it dep yeah, you broke the you broke the the stopper on it. So basically, you didn't break like the vial itself, but you broke the stopper. Oh man! Okay, um, it down. You you find in the last room that this looks like a single bed, um, men's clothing, and again no. No hardy clothing, no boots. All of these doors are so, locked. Master bedroom, mom and dad. The second bedroom we went in, that's the two boys. Yep. The next bedroom, the two girls, and then this, probably the eldest son or something. Based on the, on the painting that you saw, that's kind of what you figure. Uh, now, do, do you, you guys search any of these rooms? Hey, I just thought of something. Let's look behind the paintings. Okay. John, <clears throat> your hork friend has a point. Um, you oh, you go back into the master bedroom. You, yeah, there first. You take the, the family portrait off the wall, and you see that there is an indented um, shallow area with a wooden box put into it very snugly fitted into this wall and there's a keyhole that looks like it would open the hinged door 
Hey, little fella, do you want me to hold you up there so you can uh, take care of this lock? I will nod and... Hey, no problem. I'll hold him up there. Grab the him by the waist. The fuck of my wrist, Steve tools appear. <laughs> how, how tall is Ushun? How, how big are we talking? Six foot ten? Six foot. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm huge. He's like I am. Or I'm shorter by seven inches. Okay, mm. what'd you get, Angler? Thirteen. Nope. It is a it is a tricky lock. Like whatever's in here must be worth a lot. I'm saying one. Um, we'll try. As, as you count out loud, Harley, um, Ernest the uh, Wood Elf Wizard says. Please, my friend, don't use your eldritch powers to blast something that might be important and could contain valuable things. Because if you were to destroy something, for example, say a book that we were looking for by our employees, I might have to use a fireball spell on you. Don't worry, man. I'm not using my eldritch powers. I'm letting our hork friend do it. Hmm. Uh. I didn't get that. Um, you. If he'll don't, if he won't do that on a first try, you'll break it. Got it? No, no. Oh, this is there's anything for her to grab and break off? Yes. Come on, this is like a bounty. Built into the wall. You know, come you... on, this is a bounty. You don't, you don't mess with a bounty. You could try. Um... No, I'll no, just no, keep no. holding him up there. I can hold him up there for a long time. <laughs> Lock picking um, is a slide of hand. And Tompkins right? begins searching the room more thoroughly. Good idea. Tompkins is in this master bedroom still? Yeah. I'm letting okay. Murmur to give him a help action. Okay. So uh, Ernest finds a key underneath a bunch of stuff that looked useless inside of one of the nightstands. And he brings it over and hands it to Angler. He says, try that, my small sprightly friend. And we'll try the key. It fits. He's, he's no. not small. He's a big guy. <laughs> I want to take that box out because it doesn't look like it's going to open staying in that hole there. You, you put the key in and you open the door. And inside of the recess, you see a scroll rolled up. You also see stacks of coins. Um, you see a stack of 100 silver pieces. You see a pendant that looks like it has some jewel in it. And you see a small uh, leather bag. I'll uh, take some stuff out and start passing it to people. I'll just leave the silver or whatnot to them. I don't really need any. Okay. Of that right now. Well, who's taking the silver? Are you going to split it up? I'll leave it to Ocean. Oh, I'm holding you. Yeah. Just Ernest grabs the silver and just <laughs> stacks it up. On the bed. Yeah. Um Well, I'll put you down and just grab everything out of there and put it on the bed. Okay. I'll stay I'll look around, stand back and look around. Um the scroll is actually sealed. There's a wax seal with a very ornate um, letter A that is also kind of stylistically looks almost like a mountain peak. Like like the A is like a mountain. Um, the leather bag has something in it. When you shake it, it has something in it. I you will open investigate that up. That. Yeah, you open it up and there is a ring, a large silver signet ring, 
and it looks like it has that same A kind of um, on it, embossed on the ring. Now, why do you leave this? So the scroll is unsealed, or sorry, it's sealed. Unopened. Why do you leave? Why do you leave the ring? This is this is a this is a waste. It's proof of his nobility, you know. He left it. Ah, whatever. Maybe Which, that's the problem. You know. Yeah. They had too much. I will Something open the scroll while them. they're talking. Okay, you open up the scroll. It, it, you roll it out, and it looks like it is a hand-drawn, um, sort of a map. Uh, not even a map, really. It's it's more like plans, like the plans for a building, and it kind of shows this this building with um, you know multiple kind of layers on it. And as you're looking, it looks like basically the plans for this building for this manor. Um, and you guys are kind of all looking at this, so all of you go ahead and make an investigation check. Ten. Okay. Seventeen. And just to be clear, if any of you have any kind of guild background, this would be the time to remind me that you have that. Like mm, masonry no. or architecture or engineering. Cartography. <laughs> it looks like the building plans for this building. Um, broken up into floors and the, the top floor that you're currently in, it kind of shows like the bedrooms. Um, and then the, the main level shows the, you know, the hallway and the kitchens and the storage and the stuff like that. Um, it looks like if you're looking at the sheet, it looks like the bottom of the sheet. Say this is, oh, really? <laughs> Say this is the sheet. Oh, come on. The bottom of the sheet has space on it, like empty space. So it's like the top level schematic is on the top of this sheet. The main floor schematic is on the middle of the sheet, and the bottom of the sheet's empty. Okay, Angler, do you have the candle? I have a candle, yes. He's got Just a lantern on. Oh, yeah. Well, I, want my hip. To I want to try if there is or is not an invisible ink. Most invisible inks, they are revealed by the heat. We may try that. And roll, roll good on this one. I can see this going south. We won't burn the paper. We'll I'll hold it near it. the paper, just not close. Close enough to burn it. Let's see if anything changes with the ink. Um, uh, let's see. Make a... The following people. Jaunt and Harley uh, make Arcana checks. Fuck. Thanks. Eight. About the half elf. Well, the the wood elf wizard gets to make one too. Mm. Fortunately, <sighs> because he has arcana. I'm proficient, but eight. So you're holding it up, and you're looking, and you've got the candle, and you're like, I I don't see anything. And Jaunt, you you're kind of like, yeah, I don't see. And and Ernas is like, he's like, it's it's right there. There's a there's another level there. And he takes it away from from um he takes it away from from Harley and he lays it down on one of the end tables and he, he says, You surely you can see this. Absolutely, man. And he, he kind of starts gesturing with his finger over the bottom that in that empty space. 
and he says, "Ah, oh, blast!" He 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 looks over at, uh, he he looks over at Angler, and he's like, uh, "My friend, might I use your chalk for a moment?" And him over my chalk. He takes the chalk and he begins outlining and kind of rubbing in. And after about three minutes, he's kind of outlined this crude thing in chalk and he hands the chalk back and, and he says this appears to be a wizard marked piece of parchment and this level down here that I've outlined now for you is some lower level where's the entrance well if you look here and he traces his finger up to the second floor he says it would appear that it is here just down the hall and it looks like it goes down, bypassing the main level, into this lower level area. It's one of those like laundry things where you used to be able to like send things down with a pulley. As, a, dumb, as he's dumb speaking waiter. about as he's speaking about it, I'm heading in, in the hallway and I'm trying to blast my way in. All the doors are open. Yeah, you don't see any doors. You don't blast your way into what? It's a dead end at the end of the hallway. Yeah, right. Is that the where? Is that where the entrance in, is? In the dead end. On the of map, the hallway. that's what it seems to be. Okay. Hey, hey, we can go through this a little better. I'm gonna gonna follow him out gently because I can do that. Move him out of the way. Oh! And I will, no. <laughs> I will tap. Uh, I'll tap my halberd on the floorboards. Um, the end of it, not the sharp, not okay. the pointy parts. Yeah, you're, you're tapping for sound. Make a perception check. Oh, boy. I've done so well on these so far. Make us proud. Yeah, I'll try. Whoa, net 20. <laughs> So the closer you tap to the edge of the wall, the more hollow it sounds. Okay. And Think you I tap the wall, here. the wall straight in front of you sounds hollow. Okay. I think I found it. Um, as you're kind of looking around and you're feeling around like the, the wood grain, uh, you, you push in on one piece of wood and the wood goes in, and it slides over, and this panel opens up. And you you look in. You have dark vision, so you you look in, and there's a chute that just goes down with a rope. No stairs? No stairs. There's just a rope, and you could see you're, like, looking up, and the rope is anchored to a ceiling to a big iron ring, and it looks sturdy. Um, and it just goes down this chute, for as far as your eyeballs can see with dark vision. So it's at least 60, 60 feet down. Now you know that you're at about 15 feet height right now. Like the floor of the second floor is 15 feet tall. So this goes down at least 60 feet, which would go okay. well below ground. Hey guys, take a look at this. And I grab the rope and tug on it to make sure it's sturdy it is i'll take a peek in the abyss under ushun's arms and mm, it looks deep what do you think you you girl? also don't you don't get any sense that um oh i guess there would be some draw because you guys have the doors open and the broken window so you get a little whiff little whiff of like a very earthy basement-y kind of dampness coming up this chute. A little bit. It smells like a wine cellar. Um, I don't smell jaunt, no wine. Jaunt, you make a perception roll. Uh, you have a 13 passive perception. And I will roll for Tompkins. Twelve, if I'm rolling it. Okay. Um, you don't. You don't hear anything other than that. You don't smell anything other than that. Um, 
Tompkins looks in there too. And, and he, he kind of looks at Ernest and then he looks at Jaunt and he's like, so are we, we going to do this? You think this is where we need to go? Um, well, it's kind of hidden on the map. It seems good. Well, let's drop a torch down there first. Oh, whoa, whoa. Maybe not a torch. We don't know what's down there. I mean, yeah. say there's a big pool of oil, for example. Ah. Uh, John's I liked cantrip. John's liked the cantrip. Yeah. I think it's, uh, Tompkins, you can't. Pulls, Tompkins pulls out uh, one of the silver coins and, and he says, uh, maybe we could, you know, drop this down there. I don't know. What do you think? And he looks at you, John. That makes sense. So I'll cast uh, um, light on the coin. Mode of the blazing horizon. Then, wow. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> drop it down in there. And I'm looking. It goes down and it keeps going. And then it faintly... Like you hear a splash, like a light splash. But that wouldn't put it out. No, it's no. it's down there, but it's it's for sure well past sixty feet down there. Wiggle okay. the rope a little bit. Does it does it make a splashing? Does the rope go all the way down? Like if nope. I <laughs> no. Well, well how so... how long it have been falling? Uh, I mean, you you figure it's it's somewhere between eighty and a hundred feet down there. Yeah. Okay. See, you still got that paper there. See, sixty feet is about right here. I would say I'm not sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And then, then beyond my sight, has to go down here and down to there. And I point to the bottom of the chalk. So you guys. I could I could climb down no problem. John, what about it murmur? Occur, it, it occurs to you, um, John, that you remember when you were walking up here. Actually, it occurs to all of you guys when you were approaching. Do you remember what it looked like approaching the the manor and the the walls and and the outbuildings were all up on a hill. Up on a hill. Okay, this looks like it goes well into that hill. Mm. Because if it's a hundred feet down, you're only fifteen feet from from the the main floor, okay? So if I it's just hundred feet down, you're well down into that that tunnel. I just thought of something. About ten stories. Our tribe had a way out of the valley where we live that was hidden. So this is probably the way they left. And there might be a door outside that we didn't see. So, want me to climb down? No, the murmur will go first. What's a murmur? That's murmur. a fair question. <laughs> show, show yourself. Show uh, yourself. You see this little creature that's like on Harley's shoulder? Kind of look around at all of you and then yeah. jump into the hole and fly down. Ugh, ugly pet. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say you've never seen anything like that. Oh anymore. god. Don't worry, he's my sweetheart. <laughs> so um, Murmur flies down. Um do you have a I, I forgot your your pact. Do you have chain master? Yep. So you're able to communicate with him. Yep. And I perceive through its senses. Okay. So uh, it flies down. And basically at the bottom is a natural cavern. Not man-made. This is like something clearly rocky, you know, jutting kind of rocks. Stalagmites and stalactites. Uh, mineral deposits 
and a underground kind of splashy sort of stagnant river. Um, and there are fissures and caves like tunnels that shoot off from this in three different directions. Okay, Murmur, is it safe? Yes. Okay. We're heading there. Wait for us. All right. Okay, guys, we can go down there. It's safe. So I need to know um, climbing order. Basically, who's going down first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Right now... Uh I'll jump on the rope right ahead. Okay, good. Make an athletics check. Please fail. Please <laughs> fail. Please fail. Please fail. Please fail. Please fail. <laughs> nope. <laughs> 16. Okay. You begin climbing down. So, um, anglers, uh, <laughs> angler, are you going after him? Uh, athletics? Uh, yeah. I mean, you have a rope, so as long as you don't have a crit one. <laughs> Eleven. You're fine. Uh, who's next? Uh, I'm gonna get out my bottle of bottle of liquor from my pack and take a big old draw off it and oh, you'll be offer fine. it up to anybody else and nah. put it back in, and then I'll get on the rope and start sliding down. Okay, same thing. Making an athletics. You need checks. gloves. Rope burn. We'll see each other in hell. <laughs> Twelve. Twelve is fine. Um, Tompkins suggests that uh, either Ushun or er Ernest go next and that he'll Bad. bring up the rear. Yeah, I'll go next. All right, so Ushun, you go down, make your athletics. I, I put on my gloves and I just slide on down, let my weight carry <laughs> All right. Uh, you need me to roll, though. Yep. Okay, that's a 17. That's fine. Um, I'm going to roll for Ernas, and then I'm going to roll. And I'm going to watch him, because if he falls, I want to be able to catch him. He did okay, and Tom <sighs> did okay. All right, now, I need a separate roll. I'm not going to tell you what it is, <laughs> because I don't want to give it away. But I need each one of you to make a straight D20 roll and tell me the result. 18. Okay. 17. Okay. Two. Six. Two. Two. Well, I'm also, not telling you, I'm also not telling you if it's high or low. <laughs> um, so, who had a six? And who had a two? Me. Okay. The six and the two. The six. You're going to make a perception check with advantage. Oh, thank you. Ah. Eleven. Hmm. And the two, you're going to make a perception check, just regular, plain old perception check. See so much better when you're falling. <laughs> Four. All right, uh, Ushun, you notice as you are climbing down this chute that um, you see you see like a scuff mark up against the 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 um, rocky wall, as if something like brushed up against it while going down. Mm -hmm. You're not sure if it's one of your compatriots who went down ahead of you. Am I able to stop there? Sure. Okay, I'll, I'll put my foot, as soon as I see it, I'll put my foot on the wall. Mm -hmm. Yep. Take You're... off one of my gloves with my teeth and touch the scuff mark. Okay. It basically looks like something kind of rubbed up against that spot as it was descending or ascending you're not sure something rubbed up against that spot it's not mm -hmm. damp but it definitely looks like 
less dirty than the other spots that are all around you. Mm. I'm not smart enough to tell what that is. Doesn't look like a boot, doesn't look like a weapon, just looks like something. You're, you spotted it, but yes, you are just not sure exactly what it looks like. It's just just a scuff mark. Yeah, I come down and I, I tell them someone uh, came down here and they bumped up against the wall and uh, scuffed the side of the wall of this place. Okay. So let me explain what, what you get to. So um, Harley, when you get to the bottom of the rope, you're still about 15 feet from the, the ground. Um, and it, it's just right below you is that kind of stagnant water river. Uh, how, how do you want to get down? What's your plan? Okay. Uh, well, you can make a straight I, athletics check if you want to well, just try to drop well, or I, jump. I, I presume that I uh, have not uh, lit any torch. Well, because... you could see because the coin is still glowing and it gives okay, 20 okay, feet okay. of light. Oh, oh okay. So there's so... like right below you is the stagnant river that's about 20 feet across. And, that, and then you've got, you know, kind of a rocky... Do I have wow. any idea how deep the water is? You could see the coin. Uh, it's it looks like the water is about five feet deep. I'll try to drop down. Okay, just make a standard athletics roll. You're you're basically dropping into the water and then swimming out uh, to one of the banks. Okay, athletics. It's twelve. Okay, you splash in. You you swim over to the ba the bank and you climb out. Okay. Um, next down, Angler. What's your move? I'm going to try and swing down. Okay. Now you could do you could do just jumping in the water. <clears throat> if you want to try acrobatics? You could kind of do a little swing and see if you can acrobatically get to the the either side without splashing into the water. What do you want to do? I will do the acrobatics. Okay. Go ahead. 14. All right. You, you make it, um, you get a little damp. You kind of, you know, sp just splash in the shallow as it comes up the rock, but you kind of land whoosh, like right next to, uh, Harley who's, who's like soaking wet. Um, jaunt you're up next. You could see your, uh, you, you could see your glowing, uh, light at the bottom of this stagnant river. And, uh, you, you could see, you know, 10 feet away on either side is kind of the, the edge. I'm going to try and do that acrobatics okay. maneuver as well to avoid going in the water. Oh, one. You fall, you splash into the water, and you are soaking wet. Oh, that sucks. It's probably cold, too. And yep. nasty. Yeah, you, uh, you kind of crawl up. You're like, ah, oh, you wring your beard out and take your <laughs> cowl off and wring that out. And you just start, you you and Harley are just kind of wringing it out. Uh, Ushun, you're up next. You get to the bottom knot of the rope. You kind of see, you know. Um, can, I, uh, can I swing the rope in such a way to yeah. jump off the rope? And yeah, you can, you can, you could do that. Um, Athletics, more like, or yeah, you could do that. Okay. Uh, Sixteen. Okay. You swing, you jump, and you clear the uh, water. Your your boots. Uh, you you rattle a little bit as you land on that uh, rocky kind of thing, um, right next to Angler. Who and I'll sh I'll shout up to the guys up there. You gotta. You're going to be dropping into a five foot pool of water if you just come straight down. So Ernest, Ernest gets to the knot and he's like, uh, would you be so kind as to please catch my spell book? And, and you, you see he's, he's holding onto the knot and he, he frisbees his spell book towards you. <laughs> um, angler, make a dex, uh, I guess a, just a 
dex check. Natural one, six. May I help him? Can I, I am rolling terribly. Can anyone else try? All right, I'll let you make a dexterity saving throw, Ushun. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. Where's my cursor? There we go. Oh, yeah, even up. Uh, mm, six. <laughs> Splash. Hey, may I help them? No. Um, well, it kind of happened while you were wringing your clothes out. So you... You, here's what happens. It's splash. It's not like in the middle of the river. Yeah. It, he kind of like whips it and like Angler goes to grab it and then it bounces off of him and lands in the shallow and you scoop it out of the shallow and like shake it out. So yeah. it's not like totally soaked. <laughs> um, and then Ernest jumps down trying to swing and fails. He splashes into the water. Totally soaked. Tompkins uh, is the last man down. And he gets a 17, so he he acrobatically jumps and lands on the end. I'll help uh, Ernest out of the water. Um, he he is like, if you won't uh, mind excusing me for a moment, I I do not want to walk around as waterlogged. And he he takes his cloak off and he's he kind of starts wringing it out bit by bit. May I help him with breasted agitation? Sure. You 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 bust out breasted agitation, and Ernest is like, "Wow, I am a fool. Why didn't I think of that?" Well, not one of the ones I have prepared for today, certainly, but quite handy that you were wise enough to do so, Harley. Well done. Well done indeed. Thank you. He puts. They do the same for uh, for the uh, for the others. Okay, so and you, for you basically air dry everyone off. Everybody's <laughs> like, "Oh, that's great." Um, now Does you that guys apply to see, our stuff. Yeah, you're you're, that- you're dried off. He's he he just keeps casting the prestidigitation cantrip until everybody's kind of dried off. I hold out the book. Um, yep, the book. It's all know. crumpled. <laughs> um, so you see that, that this book. this river seems to go on a. Uh, northwest to southeast trajectory the water flow is very slow almost stagnant but you could see like as you guys are kind of sitting there getting your bearings you could see that it's very slowly moving southeast coming from the northwest and it's it is it's it's just um kind of damp smelling like you could see in the roof of this cavern where the stalag I always mix those up. Which ones are the ones from the ceiling? Stalactites. Tight. Stalactites. Tights go down, mites go up. All right. Thank <laughs> you. Interesting. You know, like tights? You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you can see the, the stalag tights um, are, are up there, and there's like, you know how like minerals ooze over time? And you even see some, um, some like you know, rocky kind of crevices where it looks like maybe over time it's built up. Um, and then you also see some stalagmites on the ground that are kind of underneath them, uh, where you know the the minerals have kind of deposited over a long time. And it's very uh, kind of musty, damp smell. Um, now. As you see this river, very stagnant, almost almost completely stagnant, but still kind of moving slowly. On the north bank that you guys are on, there are two natural cave kind of tunnels that head off in different directions. One going kind of northwest, one going northeast. Um, and then, or actually more like due north and northeast. And then on the other bank of the river, across from you guys, is one that goes south. Okay, I'll send Murmur to the south corridor. Okay. Murmur flies down the south corridor. Um, The south corridor dips and weaves and winds for quite a ways until it seems to go upward. 
um, and it, it, it splits off. So we're talking hundreds of feet. I'm gonna okay. take a sniff at every corridor, every tunnel. <laughs> Make perception check. Nature. <laughs> Maybe nature. I'll, I'll let you do nature. Sure. What, I am you, an what is revealed from that will be different from a standard perception check. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, the first one is an 18. Um, the due north tunnel yeah. seems to have no significant draft or draw. Okay, the uh, northeast north one. East tunnel. Yeah, that's same that's thing. Just like a like a five. <laughs> okay. Okay. John, what are you doing during this time? I'm gonna uh, transfer the light cantrip from the coin to the tip of my staff, so I carry that with me. Okay. Make a little wish. Make a little wish on the silver piece and the uh, water, so it doesn't go to complete waste. And and. Uh, I'm going to start heading towards the um, south cavern. You want to try south to tunnel. do a uh, a running jump over the river? How you want to do that? Um, how far is it? How wide is it? Ten feet. Ah, uh, oh, not a the, problem. The, the rope is. 50 want me to feet carry you across? Yes. Yes, carry me across. That would be <laughs> delightful. Okay, so I have a strength of sixteen, uh, nineteen. Yep. yep, you you could so put I him could on your probably shoulder. easily jump that. Yeah. Um, okay, jump him across. Okay, you get across. Um, you are. I, by my me. thanks. Anyone Ushu. else need to jump across? Yep. It's very enjoyable. Anyone ride. else? I can try uh, and take a running jump. Ernest will ex will happily accept your help. Um, Tompkins, okay. Tompkins uh, will be okay. Look at Tompkins with a nat twenty on the on the Google dice uh. roller, <laughs> just dropping it. Um, Ernest, Ernest takes you up on that offer because he is not okay. adept at physical activities. Um, Meanwhile, Harley, you you sense, like I said, that uh, the southern tunnel went several hundred feet, winding back and forth and gradually going up before it comes to a split. Do you? Yeah. What do you direct Murmur to do? Well, to the left at first. Okay. Murmur continues for hundreds more feet to the left until eventually he comes to what seems to be some kind of well okay guys i have our way back to the surface goes back oh, to the well, well. Going up. yes uh. the well if it should have picked a better spot to come out that was just the left side do you have him go to the uh. other side the right side sure the right side uh, goes for several hundred feet as well, and then comes up into um, kind of an area that's, uh, he can't just pass through walls. So I'm gonna say no. He comes up to a dead end and it looks like boards, wooden boards. Wooden boards. Yes. Okay guys, we have anomaly here. Someone or something made this wall of boards at the end of the tunnel. Everyone well, is, everyone is. Well, that's the door. Way off. <laughs> well, let's go. So you guys want to go through the southern tunnel then? Yeah, yeah, take the fork sure. that goes to the doors. We know okay. where the well is. I told them the well is in the back. This well would be way farther away. Oh, you oh, think? Oh, this is not the same well? No, oh. this is hundreds okay. of feet away. Oh. So you guys walk and for hundreds of feet through this cave-like tunnel 
before it even meters. splits. Before it even splits. Then just you just the Yeah, go ahead, John. The the well is going up to the surface, or it's another well going down. It's a well going up to the surface. But are, okay. what I'm asking you is, is that where you're going first, or are you going to go to the boards? I'd go to the well, boards. Well, we could take a peek. You know. Okay. Uh, does it look like it's climbable? So I'll, I'll say that you go. All right, you go. You go okay. to the well, and and basically you went hundreds of feet before the split. Then you went left and you went hundreds more feet and that gradually ascended and you got to kind of a clearing and that was, you see like masonry that was clearly like removed, like stonework that was removed. And when you peek through, you look up and you see just the fading light of, of dusk, but you could see like the ring of a well. There's no rope. There's no canopy or covering over the well. Is it climbable with an athletics roll? Sure. With a grappling hook and a rope? Definitely. Guess who has a grappling hook and a rope? <laughs> okay. All Make right. your athletics roll. Big guy, what do you have? What'd you get? Seven. That's... Um, you make it up about halfway and then you slip that's, down. No, that's a nat one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's try this again. Okay. 21. All right. You, you climb up, you find yourself, um, in a field again at dusk. This field looks like the land might've been farmland at some point in time, but has long since been overgrown much like the land around the manor. Um, about 50 feet away, you see a cottage. This also looks like it has been neglected. The roof has been, you know, has crumbled mm -hmm. in. Um, the walls are covered in like moss. The ground around the, the immediate area and even the path that might have been there has now been long since overgrown by weeds and tall grass. So basically okay. you find yourself by this ruined well next to a ruined cottage on farmland. Okay. I'll come down, retrieve my grappling hook. Yeah, it leads up to a field uh, and there's a cottage, uh, probably a good rallying point. We had a rallying point in our, for our tribe too. But let's keep I already, going. I already told you that. What about um, the board? So you go to the right side, you follow that tunnel, that, that fork, again, hundreds of feet, turning more off uh, to the west and eventually coming to a set of boards that look very finely put together, like almost like you're on the backside of a wall. Make a uh, perception checks. 19. Okay. You, you actually Four. hear like movement and sound from the 16. other side of the wall. It's kind of distant, but like you hear like voices of people talking and like movement and sounds of things moving, like maybe the sounds of like chairs on a floor. 17. Do okay. I understand anything? Yeah, it sounds like common. Like, common? What are they saying? You, it's, it sounds like it's, it's so distant that you can't really hear oh. clearly what they're saying. There's no way around these boards or over uh, them. You can make an investigation check, Chief. From your low vantage point, maybe you'll. Twelve. Yeah, you see, you see this little um, slot like where you feel like you could put your hand and reach in and, and there's like a, a wooden dowel, like a, a, like a lever almost. I will try and push it or pull it. However so it moves. You pull it and you hear like a click and then you see like this, the wood kind of like move a little bit, like as if it could be slid. Does conversation stop or does it continue? 
No, you, you, it sounds far away, but you. Okay. Slowly move okay. it. Okay. Make a stealth check. Nine. You're not super stealthy, and you feel like maybe this hasn't been opened in a while. It squeaks a little bit, but you see that this wood begins to move. And as you look in, you guys see that you're in some kind of storage cellar. Um, the only way that you're able to see is thanks to dark vision or jaunts cantrip. Um, but you see that you're in some kind of storage cellar and there are, you know, shoddy kind of crappy shelves that have a variety of, of bottles on them and a couple wooden barrels and casks of different sizes and even some dried food stuff. And as you open up this thing, you realize that it's, you look in, it's actually a shelf. It's almost like a shelf that can slide and it, it kind of covers this, this hidden doorway. Um, you see across this, this long basement, this cellar, you see a set of wooden stairs that seem to go up and the sounds that you were hearing seem to come from above. Uh, I think I know what this place is. And I Where? think we have another way to escape. We may search the other hallways. What do you think, guys? Yeah, well, there's there's no air coming from them. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Let's find the halfling. Let's kill him. <laughs> I thought we were looking for the book. You yeah, are. I'm trusting I'm trusting you guys to find the book because I know nothing about it. I know very no, little. No, no worry, big girl. I got you. <laughs> so did we, do, uh, do we all have the opportunity to peek in this storeroom or whatever? Yeah, do we? yeah you're so, um, I mean, literally sitting there. Do, um, is there stairs, visible yes. stairs going up? There's, there's stairs uh, all the way on the other side. Uh, imagine, you know, basically like about a 20 by 40 cellar. And where you guys are is like a storage room kind of side of it, but it's all open. And you see, as it goes away from you, on the other side are wooden stairs that look like they go up. And at this point, not only you know you can you hear people above you, but you can even hear like sounds, like kind of clattering sounds, um, and even smell. You can even smell like ale, and you kind of smell like something being cooked. Yeah. All right, so we all think this is a tavern or an inn or some kind of you know establishment like that. Probably, yep. do we do we need confirmation of that, or are we all pretty confident? I mean, we could send Murmur perhaps up to check and just confirm, or I are think we good? We are pretty confident, but I'll send Murmur if you want. Okay, I'm gonna check out the bottles. Any any fine liquors or uh, oh, fine wines? There's a Why lot not? of wine. Yeah, there's a lot of wine. Uh, there are casks that are like quarter barrels, half barrels, and then full barrels. Um, but I'm going to look for one that might be impressive and might fit in my pack. Okay. You, you pick out what looks to be like a uh, elvish vintage um, that, you know, looks like it might be a good bottle. It's, it has a label on it, but it's very old. It looks like it's been here for a while, but the cork seems to be intact. Well, um, in my bag. is this tall enough for me to stand up in, or do I have to hunch oh, yeah. over? Okay. You're, I mean, you're, you're pushing it like you have to actually, you have to hunch over. Mm -hmm. It's not, I mean, it's, it's not a huge, it's not a tall space. Well, I'm heading for the stairs. Okay. Is that the plan? Is everyone going upstairs? I don't know. I'm just heading no. there. Okay. No? 
I'll bite. I'll, hunt, I'll, I'll follow suit. You're... All right. As you guys get closer to the stairs, you hear the sounds of like kitchen, basically. And you smell that smell of like food cooking. You, you hear some orders your... being called off. Like you hear like vaguely, you're like, I need three more pork and potatoes. Like, I need another beef stew, quick. Do we have any bread yet? Like that kind of stuff. You want to send your ugly little friend up there? Come on, guys. It's a tavern. We'll it's head there? back to the caves. Three orders of big nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> we should head back to the caves. You know, it's getting toward night here. Why don't we close this door and just walk up there? It's night all the time in underground. I'm Trust start- me, I lived in the night for years. Are you yelling this? No, I'm like basically loudly just like whispering. Like he's loudly loud whispering. yelling at he's he's whisper yelling at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, I think we should hide this entrance and just just walk up there. Er- Ernest Ernest weighs in and he's like, "I am concerned that we have no- come no closer to finding this book." Exactly. Exactly. But at the same time, it would be would be nice to have a proper ale and perhaps some a warm bowl of stew. And, Even and Tom, you, man. Tompkins is like, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it would be nice, but we haven't explored those other two caves. Exactly my words, man. Exactly my words. All right, whatever. What do you say, Gaunt? John? I don't think uh, we should uh, go out this way. I think that uh, this should be our... our uh, Escape plan if we can't find a better one, but I think once we go up these stairs, uh, I've I've lurked about in a uh, a tavern or two, and I know they they're sort of an employees only policy, and they get upset if you uh, mm-hmm. are in a forbidden area. So, just from my experience, I'd be hesitant to come busting out. But well, you yeah. know, man, you know, man. I'm kind of interested in knowing what settlement this tavern is in. We'll find it out. Forlorn is heading us towards the sunlight. Ah, barely. But but Raven Queen commands me to go underground. And I will find it book. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I could, I could go where the cave mo- mother dwells. <laughs> um, you guys I'm heading back. You okay? Towards the cavern. Okay. So, um, you guys close up the the shelving, um, and you guys kind of head back. Now, this this whole traversal has. You know, like it's been a good hour since you guys yeah. went up to the well and then went back down to the split and then went up to the the cellar and then went back. So you guys get back to the main cavern with the river. Um, and remember, you are on the south side of the river now. So you need to get over to the north side to get to those other two trails. Why don't we just go up the well to that ruined cottage and take shelter there? We should Tompkins find the book like, I, I'm first. not sure that we need to take shelter uh, because I, I, if we waste time and, and there is some competitor who tries to find this book, I'm, I'm concerned that we'll miss out on our opportunity. I Thank you, we man. missed out already. Thank you. That's exactly what I think. We should find the book as soon as possible. <sighs> Tompkins gets a running start and jumps clearing the river. Um, I'll follow him. Okay, go ahead and make an athletics check. (laughs) (laughs) 16. Okay. 
Um, Come on, Ernest. Ernest jumps into uh, Ushun's arms and he's like, thank you. No, no, no. Oh. On my back. On my back. Ah. And, and so you, you ferry him and jaunt uh, Angler. You, you basically ferry people across. Um, the due north or the northeast caves? Due north. I'm heading due north. Okay. So. Um, With a murmur on my shoulder. Hold on. So I second. can see. I need, to know, I need to know marching order. So I know, I know that Harley wants to run forward. Uh, who else? Who is after Harley? Uh, I'll go after Harley. I'll be after John. Okay. Um, Ushun, where are you going at? Um, after Angler. Or yeah, are you why not? Behind Ernest. Yeah. Well, I'll just uh, I'll just have Ernest behind me. Okay, so you and Tompkins basically have Ernest covered. Mm -hmm. uh, Tompkins has his bow out. Um, John, you have your bow stick with the light. Yeah. Um, is this is this area big enough for me to use the halberd? It is. So this the cave that you guys are going in the the northeast cave is. North cave. Oh, sorry. The north, north cave north. and the northeast cave are um, about eight feet wide and okay. about eight feet tall so you uh, can you can use it but you don't have as much leverage as you normally do i'll leave like it outside stabbing. that i'll leave it outside that cave and i'll just use the other weapon i have your club yeah okay um so let's see harley and jaunt make perception checks uh, perception okay six okay 15 15 and 6. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm looking up, by the way. So you, you're looking up. The rest of you are, like, walking in. Um, Harley, you, you trip over something, but it does, you don't, like, fall. But you, you kind of, like, trip over something. And you, you look down and you see there's, like, a, a thin um, twine that looks like it was connected to one side of the wall and the other side of the wall. And then you see that this twine where it's connected to the other side of the wall goes through this little loop and goes down the tunnel. Okay, I dropped to the ground. Okay. You guys all see Harley drop to the ground. Well, freeze. Mm-hmm. Look up. Try to look back. Okay, nothing behind you. Nothing in front of you. Nothing above you. What's that? Gonna tap Harley. There was a drape wire. I didn't know. Nothing came out of the ceiling. Okay. And I'm looking and I'm looking up. If you look at the tripwire, can we see it goes farther down the cave? Yeah, it goes for it, as far as your dark vision will reveal. I don't have dark vision, but I do so have So it any. goes forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gonna write on the board. They probably know right here. Yeah. I see it's that like with the lay because of the murmur. <laughs> Does this look like something that's 10 years old or more, or this looks like something that's fresh? Mm, it looks pretty new. Sure, it would snap if it was old. All right. <clears throat> We're going to have some trouble up ahead. Okay, big guy. Do you think what I think? I'm going to nod and brandish my rapier. They are alerted to our presence. I unsheath my short sword and I'm running ahead. Oh, great. Uh, let me check your passive perception. 
Passive yeah. okay. perception. Good. Is uh, make a dex save. Okay. Uh, dex save. Uh, <laughs> 16. 16. Okay. You stop just short of a pit trap that opens up and you, you stop and you don't fall into it. And it seems to drop down 30 feet to a, a, a level that is full of sharpened wooden spikes that look like they've been there for quite a while. I fell oh. one of these one time. Okay, I <laughs> haven't anticipated that. But I'll try to jump over and continue. Sure. Um, go ahead and uh, make an athletics or acrobatics roll. So the rest okay. of you guys... Okay. Can... 10. 10? Okay, yeah, you make it. Um, Jaunt, you're up next. So you don't have to make a deck save because you see the pit trap. How far across is it? It's 10 feet. Um, and that's something I could conceivably leap? I, I think so. Let me just double check, though. It's three meters. It's okay. So you can cover your strength modifier. Uh, let's see. Your strength uh, determines how far you can jump. I got a 13. Uh, make a long jump and cover a number of feet up to your strength score if you move at least 10 feet before. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'll back up 10 feet and then run and jump. Uh, 13. Yeah, you're fine. You make it. Um, Angler, you're up next. All right. This is uh, acrobatics or athletics? Well, it could be athletics. What's your strength? Zero. Well, 10, so plus zero. Okay, so you can make it. You can make an athletics check, um, or you can make an acrobatics check and try to do kind of a wall run where you get a running start. You jump you know, halfway across the pit, bounce off the wall, and get to the other side. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, wall I run it is. It's your acrobatics check. 13 total. You're, you're fine. You make it. Um, up next, Ushun. Uh, Ernest, need help here? Yes, please. Thank you. And he, <laughs> he gets a piggyback right as you run and jump across. Uh, Tompkins will also do the same. Uh, he will run and jump, and he is fine. All right. Um, this brings us back to Harley. Okay. You I'm see, running. you see another little um, um, iron, like tiny little uh, piton, okay. kind of poked into the base of the of the rocky cave wall, and that strand of twine is still going. Okay, I'll step over it. I uh, not yell, but. I say a bit louder than usually. There's another trip wire. Be careful. I'm heading forward. Okay. Um, you are heading forward. Make a, another perception check. Okay, perception. <laughs> 10. Okay. Make a deck save. <laughs> 18. 18. Okay, Jaunt, make a deck save. Uh, four. <laughs> you, um, you see something shoot out from the side. Uh, it doesn't hit you, but it almost hits. Uh, it shoots out just behind um, Harley. So something that he stepped on or triggered, and this this kind of half spear shot out of the wall between you and him. Whew. That was close. Um, all right. 
You guys continue. Don't when you get, stop me now. When you get uh, about 60 more feet, you get to the what seems to be the end of this cavern and it opens up this this like cave tunnel opens up into another big vaulted cavern. Uh, it's not quite as big as the big one that you guys went through with the river and there's no no river here, but there are a bunch of um, stalag mites yeah. on the ground. Oh, on the ground? And a From the ceiling. Stalag tights on the ceiling. Okay. And there's across this chamber, you see uh, there's another fissure and a another cave tunnel. Opening, like, there's another opening basically across this large chamber. I'll do a quick uh, perception check through the eyes of the murmur. Okay, go ahead and roll uh, perception for murmur. Are we all gathered together? Yeah. Okay, gonna... I rolled three. It means two perception. <laughs> okay, you don't smell anything. You don't see anything. It's, it's drier here. I mean, there's still like some mineral deposits from the the um, just the usual from, cavern, right? From the stalag tights, and then there's the stalagmites on the ground. Um, yeah, I want to cast a uh, aid and uh, give everybody five extra hit points. Okay, Callous souls of the worthy. Are these temp hit points? Yeah, uh, last uh, eight hours and i'm running towards another hallway oh okay um <laughs> okay i'm for a deck save nope what's your armor class uh 15 uh what's your strength uh, eight minus one. <laughs> As you're running, uh, one of the stalagmites reaches out and whips out at you with tendrils and grabs you and pulls it in towards you. Time for initiative, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not the ropers. Okay. 13. 21. <laughs> okay. 21, Angler? Uh, Mm hmm 18 plus 3. Okay, John? 5. Uh, Yushin. Yushin. 7. 7. Furnace. 10. Tompkins. Come on, Tompkins. Oh, Tompkins. Really? We need Tompkins. Tompkins, Tompkins with an 8. Uh, all right, so Angler, you are actually going to go... In between, uh, you're you're actually going to go top of the order after the surprise attack. So hold on one second. Let me let me get our initiative into initiative order. So it's going to go Angler at 21, Tompkins at uh, oh no, sorry, Tompkins is at eight. Tompkins at eight. Uh, Harley, which makes sense because he's about to get eaten. Um, <laughs> Ernest is at 10. How did Ernest get a better? Better roll than Tompkins. Uh, Ushun and then Jaunt. I'd like to make a note that my acrobatics just plus five. All those rolls have just been so bad. All right. Um, <laughs> so you get to go. You see your friend get grappled by these, these tendrils from this stalagmite which is like literally you were just staring at it and it looked like a rocky mineral deposit two seconds ago. And then as Harley like started running across the <laughs> cave, it just reached out, grabbed him and pulled him in. And you see <laughs> that the two parts of the rock that looked like they were just striations open up into a massive mouth <laughs> with rocky teeth. And it is your turn. It doesn't get a bite for the surprise or the grapple with the surprise uh, attack. It, it succeeded on the grapple and, and the reel. All right. I will 
I don't know if the mouth is in front of it, but if it is, that's I'm going to run behind where I see the mouth to try okay. and flank. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. All right. And I will attack with my rapier. All right. It's a total of fourteen. Um, uh, yes, that's a hit. All right. And 16 damage. Assuming it's not nice. resistant. Um, you stab into it. It makes a weird, shrieking, monstrous kind of horrible noise. Um, okay. Harley, you are grappled by this okay. thing. Are there a strength check? Sure. Okay, 15. That's not bad. Mm, not good enough. Uh, um, it will bite you. Okay. For an unfriendly amount of damage. <laughs> That's not good. It is not good. Um, you are going to take 10 points of piercing damage. Okay. Um. All right, up next is Ernest, who is going to cast Firebolt because he's like, what the? And he shoots Firebolt out. Um, hitting for fire damage of eight. Okay. Up next then is Tompkins, who will shoot uh, his longbow and miss. That sucked. Uh, Ushun, you're up. Okay, I want to come right up to the dang thing. And I'm going to swing my great club like a bat. I suppose 12 doesn't hit. Uh, no, it misses. <laughs> um, you, you, you swing your club, and this thing doesn't have a lot of mobility, but it kind of bats away your club with one of its extra tendrils. And its tendrils, the two that aren't holding Harley, are kind of whipping around it to defend itself, mm. um, kind of parrying the other attacks. Uh, although clearly not parrying Angler's stabbing pain in, in its uh, back. Um, Jaunt, this brings us to you. Uh, I'm going to equip my shield, number one. Okay. And, uh, and then cast uh, Sacred Flame on one of the tendrils. Try oh. not to. Try not to get... Uh, it uh, needs to make a... What's your spell save DC again? Uh, 13. <laughs> it fails. Uh, what damage do you provide on the tendrils? Eight. Ah, that is one tendril down. Uh, far long. <laughs> the most powerful of clerics. Barely. Okay, that's top of the order. Uh, Angler, you're up. You... It... Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, Harley is grabbed by one or two of the Harley tendrils. is grabbed by two tendrils. You saw a Great of a bright light come down from like the the ceiling basically, and and just slam into one of the tendrils, which shriveled up and literally fell off. So now it only has one free whipping tendril. The other two are holding Harley. If I tried to get one of the ones that's holding Harley, would that be a disadvantage? Yes. I will. Try my luck. 
with disadvantage. That is a nine. So no. Nope. Yes. All right. Um, Harley. Okay. I'll try another strength check. And it's worse. 11. Okay. Uh, nope. That's a miss. All right. It is going to try to grab uh, AC 17 against uh, Angler. Is that a success? Oh, that, that definitely hits. Okay. Make me a uh, strength check. It's it's going to try to grapple you with its free um, tendril. Four. Nope. All right. So it, it has grappled you and it's pulling you in, uh, and then it's going to bite its currently held victim for seven more hit points. Uh, that brings us to Ernas, who again will firebolt it. Again, hitting. Four. Ah, turn us three down. Ah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's another firebolt shoots out at this creature, and it it, it kind of chars the the side of the creature, and it, the the creature grunts in pain. Um, this brings us to Tompkins, who successfully hits it with a longbow attack, doing five. Five more. Uh, that brings us to Ushu. <laughs> that's a 23. That's a hit. Seven. And that's uh, blunt damage. Seven damage more. All right. Um, this brings us then to Jaunt. Uh, sacred Flame. Again. Well, are there any, like, so one Tendril's got. So there's two tendrils one again. Tend one tendril has Angler. Two tendrils have Harley. And you you fried, freeze-dried the fourth one. So, All right. As, as long as I think I can get a shot without taking out either of these guys, I'll, I'll hit it with Sacred Flame again. Okay. It Sacred Flame of Daybreak. Fail this time. How much damage? Two. Okay, you uh, that brings us back to the top. Angler, uh, you have disadvantage, but you can try to break free on on this round if you want. I think I have better luck just swinging at it. Okay, and breaking free. You have disadvantage. Go ahead. All right. That is eight. Nope. You you kind of like you're trying to, you know, cut at it, but you're you're so pinned by its long tendril, and you, you kind of slap your blade up against it, but not enough to, to do any damage. Uh, this brings us to Harley. I try to blast it with uh, Eldritch Blast. You you can with disadvantage. Yes. Okay. I try to do that. Are you just to be clear? Are you trying to blast? one of the tendrils holding you or the actual body of this monster? The body of the monster. Okay. So go ahead and make your roll with disadvantage. Uh, I got eight plus five, 13. Um, miss. Okay. This Hopefully it didn't hit me. <laughs> brings us you didn't get a natural one. Um, okay. So the first bite is seven angler. You're going to take seven and then it's going to squeeze Harley, uh, four for the first tendril, three for the second. So seven more. Okay. Um, this brings us to, uh, what are you at right now? To wealth. Out of 24. Okay. Um, Ernest 
is going to firebolt it again. Miss. Uh, Tompkins, longbow. Oh, 13, miss. Um, this brings us to Ushun. Miss. 14? No. 12. 12. You, you guys are just like swinging out at this thing, and it's it's kind of like using your friends now to like, move, <laughs> mm -hmm. like using Harley as like a meat shield and kind of moving its tendrils, and it's like biting back and forth and, and squeezing. <laughs> uh, this brings us to Jaunt again. Uh, sacred Flame of Daybreak. Sacred Flame. Uh, this time he gets a 16. Is that a success? Okay. Uh, I'm, yeah, uh, I'm 13. Angler, back to you. All right. You just got bit, and this thing's looks like it's hungry. <laughs> I will try to shove the rapier in its mouth. All right. Yeah, 12. So close. You kind of like slash at it and you hit hit up against its rocky teeth. Um, this brings us to Harley. May I try to uh, misty step away? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. One way to do it. I Maybe. think you I think you can, but let me double yeah. check. Yeah, you sure can. So you're going to use your ability to misty step. You I try to misty step uh, away, like okay. uh, out of the reach. Yeah, well, you know this thing's got some reach, so you you misty step away to like the other side of the um, the chamber. Yeah. Okay. And now, I, and um, maybe as the bonus action. I'll no, no 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 okay doesn't matter um okay Ernas that's a success and okay so Ernas is now grappled um the other tendril missed uh, like Tompkins kind of flailed out of the way. Um, and Angler, you're going to take five. And Ernest okay. is going to take five. Um, this brings us to Tompkins. Who misses? Ushun, you're up. Come on. Yes, net 20. Uh, okay, so I max out my six cider. So that means that is 17 damage. Okay. 17. And I'm hitting the main part of it. Main trunk, right. Um, let me do some quick math here. 24, 27, 32, 39, 41. 48, 58. You guys have done 58 hit points worth of damage so far. Um, it cries out in a shuddering, loud, reverberating, monstrous roar when you hit it. And it like reverberates throughout the cave, throughout Great. the cave. Um, Jaunt, you are up. You see there's one free tendril like whipping around. And then uh, Angler is in one tendril trapped and, and the uh, wizard's in the other tendril. Oh, he got caught? Ernest got yeah. caught, yeah. Mm. Uh, I gotta, I mean, nobody looks near death. I can't tell how much. Well, Harley, Harley's gone. He just, whoop, like, like, you can make a perception check. It won't cost you anything. As far as you know, he got eight. 16. Yeah, so you see Harley out of the corner of your eye in the far corner of like the shadows of this cavern. And he looks like he, he got pretty messed up. Um, he is Misty steps 30 feet. So he's about like 40 feet away. Uh, then I'm going to barely see him. 
I'm going to sacred flame the tendril that's free. Oh, I don't have to roll. Okay, sacred flame oh, the tendril. Just, just wasted a 20. That sucks. Uh, the tendril made it with a nat 20, which is crazy. Right, um, Gabe. Uh, Angler, back to you, sir. All right, this time I think I'll try to break out. All right, go ahead. Six. Nope. Um, do you want to try slapping your blade at it? Go ahead. Nine. Nope. Um, Harley, you are about uh, 30 feet away from the creature. Okay. I'm rather like TBA. And I'll Hexblade curse him uh, as okay. the bonus action and I'll and I'll uh, shoot him with a uh, Eldritch Blast. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> 13. <laughs> Does the Hexblade curse work with Eldritch Blast for um uh, for, well, for the Well, actually I don't know. It says uh, <laughs> plus 2 to damage rolls. So it and works a critical for damage. hit on 19 and 20. Right. Could so you... critical is on 19 or 20 and then it gives you extra damage, but it doesn't give you it doesn't give you advantage. No. Your attack rolls. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you you do miss. It shoots the the Eldritch Blast kind of hits one of the other actual stalag tights. Okay. Um <laughs> which brings us now to the thing. So the thing is going to whip out uh, its last free tendril. And it misses Tompkins again. Um, it will bite Ernest. No. Uh oh. For twelve damage, Ernest. <sighs> uh, Ernest is pretty. He's pretty bad. Uh, and it squeezes uh, Angler for a mere one damage. <laughs> All right. Uh, this brings us to Ernest, who uh, will try to fail no um tompkins is going to shoot the tendril that keeps trying to attack him ah miss uh ushun you're up bonus action rage oh there it is yeah how does that look what do we see happen to ushun when when she becomes enraged <laughs> Okay. It's you not guys, a loud, it's not a loud growl, but loud enough. You that see you all know. like veins start popping out of her head and she's just like just lets loose. Go ahead and make okay. your attack roll. So is, I think this is a regular attack roll. Yep. <clears throat> uh 15. That's a hit. Roll damage. I think it's like plus two. Yes. Oh, I didn't call a reckless attack, but it is. Your rage okay. on its damage plus your regular okay. damage plus strength. Okay, so that's three plus two plus six, 11. All blunt damage. All to the uh, tendril that's holding Ernest. Oh, all right. Well, then you break it. You Good. shatter it, and he drops. Good. Okay. Uh, that brings us then to uh, Jaunt. Uh, I'm going to cast Healing Word on Ernest. Okay. Uh, uh, whoa, I already lost track of what it was. Uh, seven. Balm of the Holy Wanderer. Whoa, 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 whoa. And, and Ernest is like, oh. And he's, he's, you see, he's like trying to. So, like, when Ushun shattered the tendril, it like it kind of withered and he's kind of like breaking out and, and trying to get away from it. Uh, which brings us to the top of the order. 
I need I need someone to be my random dice roller, please. Uh, I need you to roll a who's going to be my person. Um, I'll have my cat do it. Okay, cat, <laughs> please roll a d6 and tell me the result. One. How many more will show up? One. One. Okay, uh, angler, you are up. Okay. Yeah. I will. This looks like Hopi. I'll swing better, better. What's your okay. cast? Uh, 15 total. That's a hit. Finally. Boo. Boo. <laughs> Boo. Um, Angler, are you attacking the tendril that's holding you or the main body? The main body. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. I just want this thing dead. Well, you're you're not that far off collectively. <laughs> and I'm gonna add a psychic dice as well. That is smart to do yes. as much damage as you can. Yes, please. What, what's our total? Our total is twenty one. Oh, oh all right, that was huge. It screeches again, another reverberating like screech roaring throughout this this cavern uh as it as it takes this extra damage of of both known and unknown sorts known and unknown sorts um harley you are up die and i'll blast it with elders blast okay roll Okay, it's a uh, twenty, not net. That's a hit. Roll damage, okay. and then you can add in your extra two do- uh, damage for your um, hex blade. <laughs> okay, it's fifteen damage. <laughs> okay, that's huge. Max. All right, uh, it is going to so. The random die roll from Cat was one, right? So now I'm going to roll. Uh, that's a hit. John, make a strength check. Five. You are grappled. <laughs> Uh, Angler, you take nine hit points as it bites into you. The big ouch. Um, this brings us to Ernest, who will fire a firebolt at it. Mm, missing. Then Tompkins, who will fire a longbow at it. Barely missing. Then Ushun, you're up. Okay, my first attack is going to be at a tendril holding angler. And that is a 16. That's a hit. Roll damage. So that is 2 plus 6 plus 2, 10. Yes. You shatter it. Much like the other one that you, you saved Ernest from, angler, you, you just hit the ground. And the thing is withering, and it's, so you kind of have to like spend this round like getting out of it, and then next round you'll be you're you're kind of free. And uh, my second attack will be to the body, and that is twenty one. So that is twelve damage to the body. You, why do you have the second attack? Because I'm raging. That's my bonus action. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. All right. You do how much damage? Uh, the second one is 14. It's dead. You shatter it, and the thing crumbles onto the ground, and it lets out this, like, sound, and you see this oozing kind of, like, basically you shattered its carapace, and it's, like, oozing out. Uh, and it, it, it's, it no longer makes any noise. Do I regain the six HP uh, if it died from the hexbite curse? 
Um, y yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, it doesn't say that you have to be the one to kill it. It just says that it has that's, to die. That's that's why I was asking. Yeah. yeah so you you do. Um, and and you guys, there's this like moment of not silence because the sound of the the ooze coming out of this thing on the ground is like like a constant low grade release of fart. Yeah, it's just squishy like I'm like but you see um, like across the way uh, you see Harley and and the rest of you guys kind of look around the cavern um, and it, it you don't see any of the other um, cave formations either the stalagmites or the stalactites don't seem to be animated they all seem to just be normal what about the stalagmites? <laughs> well, I'll so just so I'll just walk around bashing into a few. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. You you do the tap test. None of them come to life. Um, make everybody make a perception roll while you're in this chamber. Perception. Okay. Eight. Looking very perceptive. Seven. Thirteen. Seven. Uh, Harley, you notice that the string is is tied to another little, you know, little wedge into the that was tap nail into the wall kind of thing, um, and that goes across the cavern and continues into the other tunnel that continues going north. It may Why be connected. It? To the, it may be connected to the bell on the other cut side. It. I slash it with my short sword. Okay, you do. It falls limp. <laughs> Does he get six health back? No. The maddening, <laughs> the maddening cackle of Harley reverberates throughout the cave <laughs> as you guys kind of gather yourselves together. Now, remember where you are with your hit points and your spell casting, because that is the end of this episode of the Moon Sea Adventures. We'll find out what the party discovers as they continue their trek through the northern cave tunnels. We'll see you next time. It's me, Wizzy. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. And then don't forget to tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and crafting videos and DM tips and pro tips for vlogging and all sorts of gaming things.